know and most welcome to age 770 67 sorry we're recording here in Egvena it's been a rather long day I traveled from Gothenburg today and I have uh, been visited by my muse it's been very interesting and at least four hours of writing today with new ideas so it's a bit tiring but i'm going to take something completely different from what i had as ideas today and this is something i read many years ago in dissemination and it's derrida on plato's pharmacy uh, i call the lecture derrida turned scientific with pharmacon and the reason is uh, this is quite fascinating. Medicine has discovered that a little doesn't do any harm. Even that little poison goes a long way, so to speak, to, to make uh, an anagram of Mrs. Doolittle. This surprised me a lot. It turns out all the most dangerous poisons that surround us that we are so warned about. For instance, lead, uh, cadmium, arsenic, nicotine, caffeine, and even radioactivity is actually good for us to a certain amount. And I think the word is here quantum satis in, in latin in an adequate portion some satis and this is really interesting it's something that derrida already discussed we can actually deconstruct even chemistry or biology or medicine or the free isn't that interesting uh, i had no idea it could be that such a terrible thing like radioactivity is actually not only beneficial but also necessary a complete lack of what is called ground reactive radioactivity that is in different amounts all over the world in the, in the earth if it's too little of that it's very harmful so Dissemination, it's not only about literal text, it's not only about philosophy, political theory and such things, it's even a bit more. And uh, does it ring a bell? Well, somewhere I'd say that this marginalization, we say that something is more important than the other, it's also valid within chemistry. We know all the centralization. Uh, I like uh, the idea that in music, melody, it's much more important than harmony. Speech, of course, is better than writing. Nature, to remember Rousseau, is better than civilization. And sex is much better than fantasy or masturbation. This is a sort of supplementary thinking that the other one is something unnecessary and that is added and that was actually all these relates to Rousseau and uh, I don't think it was dear old Rousseau who instigated these things but they are constantly present because people today uh, I just had a brief look before on the internet what people think about different poisons. I'm myself very interested in much mushrooms. And this is something that's been going on for at least four decades, and that's the metal cadmium. It's a lethal metal in high doses. And it's been warned that uh, the family of the champignon a very lovely family uh, they can be found in abundance early on in uh, the mushroom season already in june july 
and you can find them in places where you usually don't find mushrooms like in the city well around the yard in the lawn parks everywhere and people avoid them like plague today because they contain cadmium well listen to this 40 years of avoidance and now it turns out this cadmium is actually good for you the very low level cadmium is something that your body needs so how many million tons of champignon has been avoided thanks to its centrality so these things are actually effectful and for me this is sort of a revenge because when I studied philosophy, Derrida was on cast. He was the worst of the worst. He could not get any worse than Derrida. And I had a teacher who said, Derrida, an idiot. He said that loud. Because there was idiocracy at his really words. Something French, irrational, nonsensical. And if he even would have heard about dissemination, and the pharmacon, he would have laughed quite directly right out. But now it turns out I got my revenge. Even chemistry and medicine and our own biology is seeing that it isn't about being a supplement, good or bad, good and bad rather. We need this badness, it's an essential part of the whole. So what Rousseau was looking for, that was the fullness of the presence. But at the very fullness there was an original lack roaming about, an absence. So one could say that Rousseau and all of us were trying to find something original. And in this case, when it comes to the poisons, I would say we're looking for some sort of purity. We want our bodies to be pure. We want to castigate the evil poison out of our bodies. Almost like an exorcist trying to cast out some devil out of Linda Blair in the movie The Exorcist. This is ludicrous looking for perfection or clean cleanliness. And now medicine showed this very looking for something original, something uh, pure, not a copy, not a falsification, not something second hand, but the very original. This purity, this original is lethal in the long run and especially one of these poisons arsenic is essential not something we can be without and you can remember maybe one of these things uh, i'll try to draw the ambigram once more i should have a copy of it all over the place because especially this lake is very hard to draw it. Let me try here. Can I do it? I don't know if I can. Horrible, horrible, horrible. This is supposed to be a vase and then you have two faces. If you focus on the faces, you forgot the vase. If you forgot, if you focus on the vase, you forgot the faces. Do you see the problem? The nature of reality is like a necky cube. The nature of reality is like the Möbius strip or even the Klein bottle. But if you try to centralize like Rousseau, Descartes, Marx for that reason, so and any other philosopher of ranks, you are bound up to end up in the same problem. And especially this thing with poisons. Another thing that's quite interesting is that we think relaxation is the only good thing. It's not. We learn that we need tension as well. 
otherwise we don't get this very nice complementary balance and modern man is looking for too much relaxation of course there should be a difference between work and free time but over relaxing is not the cure So what is in action here is our lack, our idea of lack brings in the supplement. The supplement is something that causes the lack. What we bring in is what causes the lack. What, if we bring in pureness, we are going to construct a lacking, an absence. Isn't that fun? And the reason is something that is already full. If you add something, something is not going to be there. Something is going to be overfoot. And it's also going to be in disjunction in time. This is first and then you add it. It's afterwards. In some way, uh, you could say that the French anthropologist and a human friend, Levi Strauss, was similar. He was also looking for the pure, natural man, something that was unaffected by our vices, our impurities. So he saw culture as something that was corrupting, perverse. And he also thought there was some naturalness to the original uncivilized man and that naturalness was inherent from the beginning whereas in the culture there was an original lack present already and i think the presence is the most important thing we are looking for presence it's the now that's important the closer we get to the now the better it is And from, from the beginning, pharmakos or pharmakon, as I mentioned here, was actually the original name for uh, uh, scapegoat. Something that you directed all the evils to and said, you go away, we need to cast you away. And this is actually the same tendency, but the opposite. You take something away to make the original even more pure. The scapegoat was put to fire in the end. And uh, in the most gruesome way it was killed. And there the Greek society was healed once more. And uh, also very interesting is that uh, Derrida mentions writing as a pharmacon. That was something that Plato himself or Socrates pointed out it to be. And uh, it's weird though, somehow we get tricked by this idea of purity. And this purity seems to be something it's not uh, possible to express. We already have it in us. The, the absence is already there. And it seems to be in between what is inserted in the text and what the text is supposed to be about. And in between that, uh, there is something that Derrida called dissemination. It's, it's, it's of course to do something with dissemination. In Swedish, beflöckning. And we're looking where in the text does it get blessed by this dissemination. 
and dissemination is of course the meaning what it means somewhere in between the lines in between the letters in between the words somewhere in between we're looking constantly for some sort of presence it has to be there somewhere in the whole thing it cannot be spread out it cannot be outside it cannot be both it has to be only one and it has to be here and now and oddly enough that goes completely well with chemistry and biology this uh, search for purity has developed into frenzy and we have even today a certain specific way of eating disorder and it's people who are avoiding things in the idea it's going to make them purer just like the wild man in Rousseau or the savage in the ideas of Saussure and these people they castigate something in their diet first it was very common just to obliterate meat then it was fish but today that's not enough to purge the body and the dietary regulations of the evil to have a scapegoat today it's very common you also have to take away milk eggs and even have you heard that Kalle? What is the latest, something you like, they take away now? You can't even mm. imagine. Uh, vanilla glass. No. <laughs> that would be even... That's going to be the next thing. Honey. Uh... Can you imagine why? Well, there's no actual good reason for honey. It's more of a parallel idea. Cows may be suffering because we milk them. We don't really milk bees of honey. But somehow they feel somewhere in the process it could actually happen that one larvae gets killed yeah but it's very uncommon <laughs> then yeah they don't eat honey <laughs> but somewhere we understand this purge this scapegoat is something real in the whole of western culture we need this purity and it's because of the original lack and the original lack is because we put in a supplement to help the whole thing up. So I think it's odd. This took me 25 years since I started with dissemination many, many years ago. And I now got my revenge, finally. I'm so really happy. Even into chemistry, biology and medicine, Derrida is putting his foot down and he shows that Oh my God, we need to let the devil in. We need to disseminate. We need to see that our frenzy doesn't really cope with reality as such because it's more, it's the whole thing. I say thank you very much and I bid you a very good night. Thank you. Bye.